Hello, welcome to the timer section. In this section, we shall learn how to create timer firmware applications using the um, CubeMX. So let's start by creating a delay with timer. Create a project that uses timer to create delays. And um, that's the most basic application of timers to create accurate delays. So let's see how we're going to go about that using the CubeMX. I'll click over here to create a new project. And I'll select my board. My board is the STM32 discovery board. It's an F4 board. And this is my particular microcontroller. Double click. And then it opens. And what, what I want to do is first and foremost clear pinouts. And then I'll click yes over here. And what I want to do is select a timer module and set that timer module to provide a delay for us. Um, let's use timer2 over here. I'm going to click timer2. So once we select our timer, we have to enable a clock source to the timer. And I want to use the internal clock source. So I'll just come over here, this drop down menu, select the internal clock. To run the experiment, how about we enable the orange LED to demonstrate this? So I'm just going to enable PD13 as a GPIO output. So this is all there is to it. Now we can come to configuration tab to configure our timer. So I'll click over here. And we need to set a prescaler for our timer in the counter mode as well as the counter period. So we're going to put a prescaler here based on the timer clock frequency. Let's see the clock frequency of the timer by going to the clock configuration to see the clock tree. This is the clock tree. From the tree, we can see our timer. So our timer frequency is 48 megahertz, meaning 48 clock cycles per second. So what we want to do is we want to bring our timer into the millisecond unit since 48 million clock cycles give us one second then we know that 48,000 cycles gives us one millisecond so when we use this prescaler we've brought our timer unit into millisecond unit and what we want is to give the um the counter period and we want to set a counter period to be one second a second at a time and that is 1000 so yeah that's all we need and we have to keep this one here update event time trigger selection we have to select update event to keep it updating and going on and on right moving on so once we've done this we have to enable the timer to interrupt so i'll just tick over here and then i click ok now we can generate our code i click over here give my project a name and this project i'm going to call it delay ms meaning delay uh, delay s actually because we're delaying in seconds and um, I'm going to choose my tool chain here. I'm using the Carl MDK version five. I'll select this and I'll click OK. Then it begins the generation process. And then once that is done, I can click over here to open my project. And then it takes a while to open. And here we are. I'll just rebuild to unify everything. I'll click here, and then it rebuilds. And before I move on, I'll just update my debugger here to reset and run so that I don't press the reset button whenever I load new code and then I'll click OK. And it's open here and what we need to basically do is start our timer. We can just come here and say hall hal underscore tim underscore underscore start underscore it this function takes the timer instance as its argument and it's our timer instance is defined here this the uh, our timer handler sorry as its argument and the timer handler is defined here so we just need to point to the timer handler i'll put this we'll put the ambassand sign here like this and we've started our timer basically now it's fine so now our timer has started and it's going to reload every second now what we want to do is we want to implement the callback function that should run whenever this timer counts to one one second just like we set it we set the timer to reload every second now we have to implement the callback function and the callback function is going to contain the code that will run every second so that's how our delay is going to occur we're going to put the led toggle in that function so then we create a delay like that um, so let's move on and the API we need in order to perform this is known as the period elapsed API. Um, to quickly find it, we can come over here and we can jump straight to where 
we can find it so I'll click the time module here and I'll search for how time or period elapsed and I'll just open this up a bit this one this is what we're looking for so we just copy this this is our timer um, callback function period elapsed callback I copy this and then I implement it without the weak keyword there so I just put this here like this and I can clean this and in fact I can take all of this and in this one here now I can toggle my LED I can say hall underscore GPIO underscore toggle toggle pin and then what's the pin I want to toggle this one takes first of all the port and then the pin is GPIO underscore pin underscore 13 for our orange LED so I rebuild and then I'll download onto my board and as you can see the orange LED is toggling so this is how to create simple delays using the timer um, in the next lesson we shall um, we shall take a look at more applications of the timer and then I'll see you in the next lesson yeah